people may or may not know this. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> this is the breadbasket of the world. They export more wheat than anybody. And they also export fertilizer, soybeans, and some other inputs, uh, which we've talked about previously, that uh, provide meat uh, for the world. Uh, so what can you tell us about the downstream effects of there not being potentially uh, or half as much crops coming out next year and what would happen in places that are the beneficiaries or dependent on wheat and fertilizer from Russia? So there's a number of um, first order and then second order effects that are not just about sanctions, but also about export controls by Russia that um, are creating swings in food markets like we've never seen and will almost certainly lead to widespread famine by the end of this year at this point. So the first important point to note is about 15% of the world's calories come from wheat. About a third of that wheat comes from Russia, Ukraine. Russia has banned export of wheat. And um, the, the wheat spring planting season is like now, this week. Um, and there's not a lot of planting going on. You know, a lot of commodity folks are in the field trying to figure out who's actually gonna go to field and plant but um, no one's making, you know, the concerted effort that they normally would under normal circumstances. So not only is the current wheat supply in Russia, Ukraine blocked up and cannot make its way to countries like Africa or countries in Africa and elsewhere, but the future planting season um, is now significantly at risk. And again, that's 15% of global calories. And I just to take a step back, the whole planet Earth operates on a 90 day food supply. So um, once we stop making food, humans run out of food in 90 days. So another way to think about that is our food supply excess, our capacity um, uh, in excess is about 25% of our global production. So if our global production goes down by 12%, we've lost half of our global food supply. And that's not just linearly across all nations. What happens is the most vulnerable nations lose their food supply first, and the richer nations buy that food supply to secure their population calories. And so you very quickly see a bifurcation happen when you have a shortage in a food supply like this of just a few points where suddenly famine is a real risk. And we already have about 800 million people on earth that are subsisting on below 1200 calories a day. So this very quickly tips the bucket in a significant way in a number of countries that's going to be really awful. And that's just on the wheat supply and wheat planting problem. The bigger problem is the energy price problem and the phosphorus and potassium problem. All fertilizer is made up of nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. Those are the three major types of fertilizer that farmers around the world have to use every year in order to grow that crop. Without fertilizer, plants don't grow. Nitrogen is made from natural gas. 98% of the world's ammonia is made from natural gas. Natural gas prices, as you guys know, have doubled, and the, and the futures market looks like in some places, natural gas prices going up like 4x. As a result, the price of ammonia fertilizer, nitrogen-based fertilizer, has gone from $200 a ton to $1,000 a ton. So it's five times as expensive to buy basic ammonia fertilizer today than it was a few weeks ago or a few months ago. And so this is now leading a lot of farmers around. And then the other big problem is phosphorus. So phosphorus, you know, by some estimates, I mean, you know, there, there's a little variation around here, but about 10% of the world's phosphate comes out of Russia. And um, about, you know, call it 25% um, of the world's potassium comes out of Russia, pot potash. Both of those markets are blocked up. They, they, are, they are sanctioned and they, they have banned exports. Russia has through the rest of 2022. So around the world, the cost to make nitrogen fertilizer has skyrocketed because of natural gas prices, because of the Russia problem. And Russia is not exporting potassium and phosphorus. And as a result, the price of nitrogen has gone from 200 to 1,000. The price of potassium has gone from 200 to 700. And the price of phosphorus has gone from 250 to 700. So now it's so expensive to grow a crop that a lot of farmers around the world are pulling acres out of production. And they're actually going to grow less this year than they would have otherwise because it is so expensive and they cannot access fertilizer locally to plant crops. So not only do we have the, the wheat problem, we now also have the fertilizer problem and the acres coming out of production problem. And so food supplies are going to go down even further, and this is going to become even more catastrophic. And so there's a scrambling going on right now, you know, food prices around the world. As a result, everyone starts buying up all the commodities, they buy up all the corn, they buy up the soybeans, they buy up the wheat, 
And the price for corn has nearly doubled whereas, you know, from where it was in July of 2020. Uh, the pot price of soybeans, the price of wheat are all skyrocketing. And in a lot of countries, they cannot afford to um, acquire and individuals cannot afford to, uh, to buy food. Uh, with the skyrocketing commodity prices. Wait, can I, that can I ask you a question? Uh, I think it's estimated that the U.S. food supply, if you could X out the waste, would actually feed most of the developing world because I think 30 to 40% of all of our food is wasted. Can you do something with that? Yeah, that, that is actually true. Um, a lot of that happens at the point of consumption. So it's in people's homes. So it's a reverse supply chain problem um where you know we throw away a lot of like stale bread and cereal that goes bad or, or whatever um there's some in the fresh vegetables market but generally the core calorie producing commodities are rice wheat potatoes um and corn those commodities don't go bad in the supply chain they end up getting tossed out at the end of the supply chain which is at the point of consumption at, at home so you know i'm not sure there's a real solution there right now the the, the bigger issue is like how do you get bulk commodities to the places that are going to need them over the next 12 months. So look, we're, right now we're reducing food supplies, stocks around the world. There are strategic reserves that are getting opened up and being released. As that starts to get deplenished, um, diminished, and as the production kind of numbers start to come out, it looks like less acres are in production. You know, and God willing, we have a good weather year everywhere this year. Because, you know, a bad weather year in some markets could completely decimate the remaining supply that's coming out this year. Regardless, it is going to be a humanitarian disaster within a year. And we will see hundreds of millions of people go starving. And there will be potentially, oh, I think... You said hundreds of millions of people are going to Hundreds of starve? millions of people That's will go starving. That's never happened in the history of humanity. 800 million has people it? already live on below t uh, 1,200 mm -hmm. calories a year right now. And so, so you're predicting that a hundred, over 100 million people will die because of this? I don't know about death, famine. Like famine is this like, you okay. know, short of calories. You know, within, the, within a market, it's not like, hey, there's no food. Like, you know, there will be strategic reserves released. There will be stuff, but it won't be enough. We just don't have mm. enough. And the way supply chains are set uh, up, there just isn't enough.